Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris and I'm bringing it to you from Westlake Village, California. It's a beautiful day out there. Happy Friday to you. Uh, first thing I have on the board apparently is Mr. Chainlink, the strongest uh, link in the, the Link Marines. Very strong uh, coin, as you can see. This is the blockchain developer that wants to, you know, tackle real world assets, has landed some major contracts and... Uh, well, basically, there's going to be a few drives of hidden uh, bullish divergence coming back from this last low right here. So if we can confirm this as a local low, I'm looking at least for a shot up to this trend line at 1450. And then it can get interesting if we break above, maybe attempt this this area right there. But there's a decent chance for a bounce. We're going into a weekend. A lot of the altcoins tend to outperform <laughs> outperform. On the weekend, and uh, if it does want to come a little bit lower, I think a you know major buying opportunity area would be uh, somewhere in this zone. Recovering this last major volume pivot, kind of back from uh, a few days ago, I think there's a lot of open interest around there. Probably going to bounce, and uh, I'm generally going to look to judge it from there. This one is on a macro breakout as I should denote here and, uh, you know, could get as high as 28 bucks. But um, as I'm bringing that up, I, um, yeah, in general, want to take a look at a few other altcoins. I'm going to talk about Bitcoin's price action. We'll take a look at Dixie, NASDAQ, and um, <clears throat> I'll save one good, you know, uh, altcoin for the end. And, uh, more, more of a, a degen type play, if uh, so to speak. And um, let's jump into it. Taking a look at gold bouncing off of our last kind of bouncy area, looking for um, an attempt higher. But I don't imagine it, a breakthrough here unless the dollar really starts to break down and uh, we have some kind of, you know, world catastrophe dollar up and uh, risk assets seem to be looking strong. NASDAQ breaking the trend. And, um, you know, what we've been saying all year long is a um, attempt at the highs and going into the election year. What, what else do we have going for us Christmas season? I don't know if that means anything, but uh, this is generally looking uh, bullish at the moment, and Dixie is uh, coming down and helping all the risk assets out. So leading on into the bias for Bitcoin, um, when the dollar is you know, getting heated like that to the downside, and what we've said all along as we broke out and hit the 0.5 retracement, I believe that's what it was, right there at on the weekly time frame, perfectly tagged it. And we said, hey, look, as long as we're above this box, generally looking bullish. Um, however, back, you know, below this box, and that's where we get into trouble. So support, resistance, call it what it is. And um, just want to keep our eye on that. Also looking at Bitcoin dominance kind of broke out of this wedge and just maintaining the trend, you know, even though Ethereum has been outperforming over the past few weeks, I noticed Bitcoin dominance remaining strong, showing, you know, relative strength to Bitcoin, um, kind of given the bias that it, you know, could have uh, still another push as long as we're consolidating, making the higher highs and higher lows. And... Um, Definitely, um, you know, the longer it consolidates, especially on the daily time frame and volatility becomes, you know, more depressed, then that does give us a shot at that upper end of the wedge here um, up at 46,000. But I definitely want to clear this level first. Otherwise, if we start breaking down, because um, it can always come back down, you know, pretty swiftly here, especially with, you know, still relatively low liquidity in the market. Uh, pretty much a daily closure back below that 35.3 area, and it probably comes down pretty quick to that green 55. Coming in at 32.6, and then kind of next level down, level down. But generally, uh, you can see this is sideways and up. 
Don't fight the daily downtrend or the weekly or the monthly <laughs> as they're all, um, you know, generally up and to the right right now. And still relatively low volume coming in on the monthly time frame. So we haven't had uh, an expansion candle or a, a massive volume, at least on the BitGet uh, <laughs> perpetual contracts. Let's check out Binance, where the most liquidity is. Uh, that it, not Binance. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm, not as fast as I would like today, but uh, <clears throat> again, kind of looking at that not 0.5 coming in at 41.9 or the uh, 618 up there at 47, 48,000. And that is using the Wix. So, you know, in a more volatile market, you can see volume hasn't necessarily kicked up yet. So. I would expect at least one good volume candle on the monthly time frame for sure uh, for, you know, before the end of the rally. I don't know. That, that could be months out. So scratch that idea. Um, look at this one we mentioned a few days back, uh, Tau. And we talked about this being a W formation and coming up to the 1618. And if we broke that, well, I guess your next target's up there at 204. Again, low liquidity degen, um, super AI coin, you know, no, no recommendations here, do it your own risk, et cetera, et cetera. Um, AVAX had a big bank par partnership and um, uh, announcement, some good marketing, a good layer one, you know, broke the W formation, strong, you know, volume coming out of the, and just tackling that green 55, no problem. So the question is how much more does it have to go or is the run done? Uh, and I guess it, just using candle bodies, you could see there's another little stretch to get to the 1618 at 2726. And the daily volume is still, uh, sorry, volatility is still maxed out. So, you know, this could have another day of explosive volatility to the upside. This thing's been ripping like 20, 10, 20% a day. Um, it is definitely um, apparently getting some attention now as people were saying, look, you know, they we're probably going to go from Solana to Avalanche. Okay, I think that's... Um, the last, or I, I guess I'll take a look around the board. Dot, you know, another favorite out there. I know a lot of people have Dot. Polkadot ecosystem has a nice governance, um, you know, tool. You can vote. I, I, too much to explain. We're just going to stick to the TA here for today. Um, this one definitely is either in the beginning of a, a breakout or um, it's going to be a massive failure and I'm leaning towards a breakout. And one of the other things you can look at is total market cap three that broke out here. And um, you can see this long-term channel just broke above and we're either getting continuation or not. And this would kind of be what it would look like on the not side. Um, obviously you can draw that to the upside, you know, we break out, make a higher low and keep going. And that's all the coins excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that's total three. And um, generally, you know, if we want to see major upside continuation in altcoins, well, we want this to continue to the upside, not play out to the downside. Otherwise, I think we'll see a rush back into Bitcoin and Ethereum and, um, you know, we could see some massive corrections on these coins like Rune, which um, let the trend be your friend till the end of the trend. Uh, 
Rune, a decentralized exchange, has been just on a tear. And uh, you can see if you draw a trend line from the ultimate high, uh, you know, we're just coming into what could be a massive, um, you know, ascending triangle breakout or failure and rejection after like a 200% rally. Um, I think that's it for me today. I am going to let you go and just lastly throw up a little because um, I know a lot of people have Ethereum. We talked about a breakout here. And this massive ascending triangle, that's why it's always best to wait for the wicks, right? But best case scenario for Ethereum would be some downside. Um, and we come and make a higher low somewhere back there and then make the move. Do I think we're going to get the chance to buy Ethereum back down at 1700 No, but uh, just, you know, preparing for the opportunity if possible um on the other side um what else yeah volatility is beginning to decline on the daily so we're getting kicked out of the bullish control zone and um yeah that does look like you know unless we pivot right now and uh, make a higher low above 2000 it's going to look like a breakdown to the downside for ethereum and uh Bitcoin is holding strong. I feel like we didn't even look at Bitcoin on the sh shorter term time frames, but basically a 15 minute uh, above this wick right here at uh, 36,920. I'd be looking at an attempt at the top side of the range back at 38,000. And then, um, you know, potential from there, um, preferably you'd want to see a four hour closure back above this wick at 37 or 36,8. And um, that's just going to look like higher lows on the four hour time frame, higher highs and higher lows. So where's the next higher high coming in at 38.2, maybe somewhere up there. Um, yep. And that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed and have yourself a blessed rest of your day and weekend and enjoy it with your family. Take care.